Yogi. From four very different perspectives. On the crazy and unpredictable world of professional wrestling, as a pure theory creations entertainment network presents a live interactive show where you can be part of a conversation of all things professional wrestling, from the major leagues to the independents. This is Fatal 4-Way, live on Owen TV. And we welcome you to the premiere of a brand new endeavor here for both the PFC Entertainment Network and Orion Neighborhood Television. We welcome you to Fatal 4-Way the area's only live interactive professional wrestling show, along with Quadell Edwards, Sean Grugel, and Brian Balf. We welcome you to what we have been talking about for a long time, gentlemen, and it's finally going to happen. We are as live as it can be, and you can join the conversation by calling in at 810-331-2829, but we do ask a couple of things right out of the gate. Number one, if you do call into the show, we ask that you turn your audio down so we don't have that really weird feedback. But we also, and more importantly, we ask for you to be respectful. We will be respectful for you. We hope that you will show us the same courtesy because this is supposed to be fun. Now, we do know that we are going to ruffle feathers. We do know that there are going to be opinions and things that we talk about here that you may not agree with. That's the purpose of conversation. We can do it in a respectful manner, and we're here for it. But I will, pro I do promise you this. If things go off the rails, you will be dumped and blocked. I'm just throwing it out there. You know, I don't play. Q, you know this. Absolutely. Um, so this is going to be a new format for us, and this will be... Um, trial and error we are going to try things and we want your feedback what works what does not so what we're going to do is break the show up if you can imagine into four quarters and we will talk about a variety of topics in and around the entire world of professional wrestling whether it's in wwe aew or even on the smaller independent levels and everything in between but we are going to kick off with some of the headlines that are dominating the world of professional wrestling. And gentlemen, at the, at the top of the list, the retirement, you know, when you talk about retirements and you talk about the big name stars of professional wrestling, we as fans witnessed what was presumably the retirement of one of the true icons of this business, the one and only Sting had his last match this past weekend at the Revolution pay-per-view. 38 years in the business, Q. What's, what, you, you hear the name Sting. What is the first thing that, that comes to mind? Man, uh, I go way back with Sting. I think about uh, the feud with Vader. Yeah. To me, that was, that, that made me a fan right there, you know, watching wrestling back then, you know, watching the, you know, Sting and Vader go back back and forth. Vader was one of my favorites. Sting was one of my favorites that never really got his fair due in WWE or WWF, you know, but dude, that, that dude had quite the career, man. He really did. Brian, do, did you prefer the Surfer Sting or Crow Sting? Because as we got into the weeks leading up to this pay-per-view from All Elite Wrestling, um, there, was a, there was that line. Did you prefer the surfer or the crow or the, you know and then you can go into the joker part when he was in tna but what was your your favorite version of sting i feel like i disliked both but if i was to choose one it'd be crow sting were you just not not a fan of the guy i was not i just he was so baby face it just didn't do it for me for yeah. what the surfer sting and then it was just such a rip off of the crow right it was just like oh, come on dude <laughs> <laughs> sean between you and i we have almost 50 years combined in the wrestling business. You look at a guy like Sting and his impact on, on the business, and I have a two-part uh, two question for, for you. 
What's going to be his legacy in this business? What's going to be his legacy? Yeah. His ability to evolve, his ability to change characters, and his ability to stay mainstream. Between coming out as uh, part of the Blade Runners with Jim Helwig, up to the point where he became Surfer Sting, you had Wolfpack Sting, you had Black and White Sting, mm -hmm. you had Joker Sting, and then finally we had this incarnation of him teaming with Darby Allen. His ability to be able to move along with the times is going to be his greatest legacy. So my my second question to, to this is, this was billed as a retirement match. The word retirement match in the professional wrestling business is almost a joke because I don't know how, you can almost count on one hand the number of big name guys that went on this farewell tour, had a big blow off, but they didn't really retire. They wind up c coming back. Does Sting stay retired? I think Sting does. I, I really do. Uh, he finally, that was pretty cool. I <laughs> it was cool. Yeah. Yeah. did a spin of room. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> he, he had the proper send off. <laughs> he didn't get that send off that he needed in the WWE. You know, he claimed that he, he actually pushed Darby Allen up, kind of passed the torch on to him, which, you know, Darby Allen. But, you know, um, <laughs> but Sting, I, I think Sting has cemented his legacy. He got to come out to the ring with his two sons, yeah, each awesome. dressed in different genres of the characters of Sting. So I think Sting's going to be very happy with this retirement send-off. Certainly, yeah, you know, he's the one guy that I feel like, because he, he, he does have such a respect for the business, and he is very much old school. You use the word retirement. There's a reason why there's that word. You know, I you think about Ric Flair. You think about, I mean, Mick Foley is talking about right. coming out, yeah. out, out of retirement at this point. Don't Ric Flair, woo! Yeah. <laughs> um, you mentioned Darby <laughs> Allen, and I'm going to take this on the sidebar here. Um, I find, and this is going to be a source of contention, and, and once again, if you have an opinion on this, you're welcome to call in to, to the show, 810-331-2829. Darby Allen, I understand the whole premise of Sting passing that proverbial torch. I mean, that's kind of what you do on your way out. But I feel like with with what went down in this pay-per-view, and I'll be honest with you, I did not order the pay-per-view. I didn't see it, I, but I saw the highlights of it. This spot where he jumps off of the ladder through a plate glass window or whatever the hell that thing was, to me, that was his... Um, and I'm sure, I would like to think this is not what he intended, but at the same time, I looked at this as a very selfish spot because in the minutes and the hours and the days after the fact, we're not, we're no longer celebrating the guy that retired. We are putting a lot of emphasis on this crazy high spot that in my estimation, didn't really need to happen on this occasion, and then it kind of took away from from Sting's last match. What, what what's your opinion on this? I I, I definitely agree. Uh, I'm not surprised though because uh, Darby Allen, like you know, I don't follow Darby Allen, but uh, I watch enough highlights to see everything that he does in the ring. And it's always a daredevil spot. And it's always like, he, he, he did that same spot onto a bunch of chairs with Jeff Hardy right. not too long ago. I mean, he does this all the time. This is a guy that's about to climb Mount Everest, you know. So even though Sting tried to pass the torch to Darby, I don't think Darby's going to hold on to it long because he's, he's going he's gonna to be done. That was going to be, be my next question, Brian. Does Darby... It's, does he have the capability of taking that proverbial torch and actually making something of himself after this run with Sting? I mean, like Sean said, is he going to be able to, if he's going to take on the legacy of Sting, is he going to be able to adapt? Because right now he just seems like he's one, one dimensional. Character. Yeah. One dimensional. Yeah. And it, like you said, it's all high spots. Yeah. As a Craziness. worker, Theatrics. as a worker, what's, <laughs> what's your take on this? Pound for pound, I think he's probably one of the toughest fellas out there. I mean, he doesn't have any fear, and that could be his greatest achievement or his greatest downfall. Mm -hmm. My biggest problem with the spot 
was he got up to celebrate in the, sting with, or in the ring with Sting afterwards. If he would have sold that spot, if they would have carried him out and maybe helped him out to the entrance, you know, to celebrate with Sting, I, I would have bought into it a little bit more. Yeah. But the fact that he got up, and we've seen Jeff Hardy get carried out on stretchers. We've seen, right. you know, we've seen uh, Bubba Ray Dudley get carried out on stretchers from doing these big ladder spots. But Darby, 165 pound Darby, is able to jump right up and celebrate. And hey, I'm going to go clown Mount Everest. Yeah. Nah, come on now. You just totally overshadowed Sting's retirement. I totally agree. Yeah. I totally agree. Um, Moving forward here with the headlines, you know, you, you, we have to make, make mention of this because it's one of the unfortunate aspects of professional wrestling. We get so invested in these characters, we almost f forget at times that these are actual human beings. Um, during the course of their career, you know, they, they all make an indelible impact in one way or the other, and when their final bell rings for the lack of better term we want to pay homage with that and in the last week or so there was three prominent names that uh that we lost here virgil who we know of the three is probably the most recognized and famous of them because of his work with the million dollar man ted ibiase uh, we lost virgil we lost ole anderson and we lost uh, paul vachon uh, a lot of people may not be, oh, you know, entirely f familiar with Paul Vachon, but during the territory days, he made a very big impact in the AWA and later on in uh, the NWA as the two prominent, um, you know, t territories at that time. And he did ha have some some time in what was the WWF, uh, but Ole Anderson is another one of these polarizing. Um, you know, characters that, uh, hey, we have a call coming in. This is going to be ph Ooh. phenomenal. Uh, so we're going to pause that. Uh, welcome to Fatal 4-Way. Who do we have on the air? This is, this is Kristen Watt. <laughs> oh, wow. Kristen Watt, who you hear on Mondays here on the PFC Entertainment Network. How are you, dear? I am doing okay. I just want to say congratulations on your new show. Sorry to interrupt you in your uh, in your dialogue there. Well, we certainly appreciate you taking time out of your Friday night to to give the show a listen. Um, do you have a weigh in on Sting's retirement? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know anything about what you're talking about. I just wanted to congratulate you. <laughs> All right, we'll see you at karaoke tonight. Yes, we'll see you at karaoke, and it's a great day. I'm going to go see Jelly Roll in a few. <laughs> <laughs> we certainly appreciate you, Kristen, and we'll we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, thanks for All for right, being a part of the have show. A great time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thanks. Krista awesome. Watt, yeah, that was cool. A little, little run in there yeah. by, by Krista Watt. Again, you hear her Mondays on her podcast, Say What, on the PFC Entertainment Network. Um, uh, you know, Virgil, Ole, An Ole Anderson, Paul Vachon, um, you know, we certainly wanted to take time to acknowledge their contributions to the business. If you have a favorite memory of any of these guys, um, you know, we invite you to call in t to the show. You can be a part of the conversation live. The number is at the bottom of your screen. Sean, I got to believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, you talk about these three guys. Virgil's the one that jumps out at, at off, off, the, off the page, right? Well, may, maybe to people who only watched WWF in the 80s. I mean, if you know anything about Ole Anderson, you know, you're talking about one of the original Four Horsemen. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the voice of the Shockmaster, yeah, you yeah. know. And, <laughs> and Paul the Butcher... <laughs> <laughs> Paul the Butcher Vachon... I mean, Luna Vachon's, if I remember right, her, her father, right? Her uncle. Oh, was her uncle? Yes. Okay. But uh, the, the butcher was, I mean, people were legitimately scared of this guy when he came to the ring. Uh, but Virgil, absolutely. Him and DiBiase, Macho Man and Elizabeth, Undertaker, Paul Bear, peanut butter and jelly, man. You can't think of Ted DiBiase without Virgil. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Brian, uh, 
Are, were you f familiar with Ole Anderson's contributions? Not just what he did in, in the ring, but he was he made a name for, for himself behind the scenes as as a booker too. Yeah, not really. Like I know I've, I've heard it in passing and stuff like that, but not really like anything like that. So Virgil though. Oh yeah, Virgil. Like yeah. I mean, like you said, peanut butter and jelly. You can't have Million Dollar Man without Virgil. Right. Right there, interrupting as much as he could possibly do. And probably one of the best baby face turns ever in the WWE. Absolutely, oh, yeah. such a great <laughs> build back in that day. Yeah. It's such a. It, it was a. It was an easy story to, to tell, but man, the the time that they put into it really made him a star. You know, and uh, in his later years, he almost became kind of like a punchline. You know, he he became a meme and, yeah. and, and things of this nature. But make no mistake about it. Um, he made an indelible impact in the history of professional wrestling. I have other notes here, but we're trying to keep things um, in line with our format and, and our time frame here. Um, because I'm going to use this as an easy tra transition into this, th this next block. Because WrestleMania season is here. We're talking about it. Everybody's talking about it. If you are a wrestling fan, there has been a lot of moving parts in terms of building the card for WrestleMania. And we're going to be spending a lot of time between now and that first weekend in April breaking down everything that is happening in building this, this two-night event that's going to take place in Philadelphia. Um, but, but a big part of WrestleMania weekend has traditionally been the WWE Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Two people have been um, announced as the class of 2024 inductees. Bull Nakano, a uh, Japanese w women's uh, megastar. Uh, she mm -hmm. Three. The USA Express was announced today. Yeah. Oh, were they? Yeah. I did not hear yeah. that. They actually really released not. a video of Triple H calling Mike Rotunda and Barry Windham. No. Which is kind of cool because now they're kind of <laughs> following how the NFL does it, where they just kind of show up and, like, do it. So, two times for Barry uh, Windham now. Good thing we're here to yep. correct yeah, it. Yeah, way to go, guys. Way to go. I have feelings of, like, that's... Uh, you think it's leading into somebody else? No, I mean we'll we'll talk about that here <laughs> in, in a second. But like knowing what I know about both those guys, on you know, aside from what they did in the ring, but like their personal challenges and things that they both overcome behind the scenes, yeah. especially Barry Windham in in the last few years, like we almost lost yeah, him. He, you know, he had yeah. a massive heart attack yep. and nobody knew if he was going to be be able to to recover fr from that. Brady so to, video about that. to know that yeah. they're going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame as as a tag team is is pretty huge. Um so very well deserved. Absolutely. Bull Bull Nakano same thing. But Paul Heyman is also, he was the first one that was uh, announced to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. And his induction announcement really sparked a lot of conversation, both pros and cons here. And we can spend time to talk about, you know, the journalist. Sean and I actually did a, uh, a whole episode on the hot tag this week um, on the PFC Network of about these journalists that cover professional wrestling and Paul Heyman was you know very much prominently featured in that conversation and before we go into who else should be inducted let's talk about real quick we'll we'll go around the horn here Heyman Bull Nakano the US Express Q I mean is there anybody here that you think geez no that's not their time or what is your your take on on this class so, so far so oh, i'm with it so far you know i'm i'm with you i'm happy about uh you know the u.s express going in um especially with all the situations that's right. going on yeah i'm happy about that uh bull nakano i actually uh grew up watching bull nakano uh, um quite a few times i would even say you know to our audience to go back and watch the monday night raw after wrestlemania uh, 95, I believe, Bull Nakano against Alondra Blaze. Yes, sir. On Raw. Great match. 
great match. Uh, you know, if you want to see her work, and then you know, it's all Japan wrestling. You know, she she had a lot of great matches there. Uh, Paul Heyman, man, I'm with it. You know, Paul Heyman, especially it's Philadelphia. I feel like this is the right move. Um, you know, and it's crazy because he started off as a cameraman right. for for Vincent Senior. Yeah. So I mean, he come, he 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 has come a long way. You know, we all know about the ECW movement, everything that happened there. You know, and just his connection to wrestling and being now the advocate. He doesn't like to be called a manager. So I, I actually like that little aspect of him, of him as well. He wants to be called an advocate or now the wise man. Right. So what he's doing for professional wrestling, everything that he has done, you know, he deserves to be put into the Hall of Fame. It's the little nuances like wise man that sets him apart, right? Absolutely. Now, in when you look back at Paul Heyman, and you can comment on, on Bull and the U.S. Express too, but like Paul Heyman has been the lightning rod so far with this with, with this induction class. In the grand scheme of things, in the big picture, where does Paul Heyman rank as the greatest managers in wrestling history? On the spot. I know. I'm like... Come on, bro. <laughs> yeah, what do you got? What I'm do you like, got? At, at this point, yeah, you, you just got to be right there in the conversation as a goat of managers. Right. I, I don't see how you – I mean, they're basically handing him the top talent at, at, at every time, whether it be Lesnar, now Reigns. The guy's a lightning rod, and he CM knows Punk. how to talk out of mic. A lot of people forget that CM oh, yeah. Punk, yeah. Yeah, during his uh, world title run, uh, Sean, we'll start the com- this part of the conversation with you. We've got Paul Heyman, we've got Bull Nakano, we've got the U.S. Express. Who else should we start th- thinking about inducting into the Hall of Fame? You know, this could be a whole show in itself. Oh, um, all right. Real quick, Bull Nakano, I'm not real high up on. Uh, this is called the WWF Hall of Fame. All Japan Wrestling, she was great. Yeah. She was in WWF E for a hiccup. If it was me and they needed to induct a female, I would say either Velvet McIntyre or Rockin' Robin, mm-hmm. um, or even the Jumpin' Bomb Angels if they wanted to put you know, uh, them in there. Uh, who should be in there now? I, I, the Powers of Pain, Demolition, yeah. um, you know, uh, Haku, and he's been talked about uh, so yeah. far. A lot of yeah. a lot of renewed up. interest mm-hmm. in Haku. Haku yeah. 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 Well, especially after this last Dark Side of the Ring on uh, John Tenta, they showed uh, your favorite, the Shockmaster, fall through the wall, <laughs> and Haku just starts belly laughing like you you can't turn away from it. He's having such a good time. But to me, if it's a WWE Hall of Fame, I really think they need to focus on WWE superstars first. Uh, another thing I would like to see them do at the Hall of Fame, I'm going to make it real quick, I promise, is I would like to see an enhancement talent wing. Mm. I've talked about this before. I would love to see a, a, a Barry Hardy, uh, Iron Mike Sharp. Uh, Barry Steve Horowitz. Lombardi. Barry Horowitz. Barry yeah. Horowitz, Steve yeah. Lombardi. You know, these guys that help elevate these superstars to the Hall of Fame. Yeah. These guys are Hall of Famers in their own right, and why they don't have their own Hall of Fame is beyond me. And Triple H, I know you're watching this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Call me. We got this. Okay. <laughs> and we invite you, Triple H, to call hey, in. Call in. Hey, call in. number right there. Call in. 289. I'm sure you're not busy. <laughs> yeah, you've got nothing but time, pal. I have no doubt. Um, you know, you talk about the Hall of Fame, and there's going to be people that are in the business that that can to- that totally condemn this whole thing. Like, oh, they're just doing it to glorify their own brand, and there's no f- physical building or anything like this. And, but they're going to be the first ones. And, I, man, I t- really tried to steer clear of... Uh, mentioning this but i use it only as an example but you take a guy like uh, like a ryback who <laughs> <laughs> who you Mouth drop man <laughs> you talk about a guy like a ryback who is very vocal very critical of wwe and the powers that be and make no mistake about it and i only single him out because he has been on our radar very re- recently because of some unintelligent commentary that he brought to his platform, which he's entitled to. I'm not saying, hey, you you do you, boo. Wait you know, long enough. We'll have some of our own. 
yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> um, but he's you know he's one of these guys there, and there's a lot of them. Demolition too at at this point, you know, very vocal, very critical of of the company. But here's my thing: if it wasn't for WWE, if it wasn't for the powers that be, uh, nobody would know who these people were. And they're also the first ones, Q, and we've seen this time and time again, that when they do get that call, all of a sudden they're there oh, wa- yeah. waving that banner, right? It's, it's the flip-floppy, yeah. and you're, you're going to see the transition here in a minute, Sean. It's the flip-floppiness that really it, it disqualifies almost everything for me, that even if they do get that call in the Hall of Fame, I don't give a crap at this point because uh, exactly. you have demonstrated who and what you are. I mean, they get that call, they're going to big pop a pump their way right on into <laughs> that Hall of Fame. <laughs> I was going to say, I seem to remember a certain female wrestler throwing her heavyweight championship in a trash can, but as soon as she got the call to the Hall of Fame, boy, oh, yeah. she was she right got there. It out. Yeah, hold it out. No, no, no. It's called recycling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We talk about the flip floppy, and it's going to kind of, kind of cir- circle back to a previous part of this conversation, and it all leads back because you know the Hall of Fame and all the pomp and circumstances. It's all part of WrestleMania weekend, and um, you know we got into this conversation about uh, the journalist part of it uh, when we started talking about pe- people, you know, kind of changing their perspectives or their point of view based on their environment or who, who we're talking about, you know, we, we got front row seats to this online bickering war between The Rock and Dave LaGreca of <laughs> Busted Open Radio. Q, you, the three of us actually, because we all work at the same place, we got in, into a conversation. You hadn't seen any of this stuff between Le, uh, The Rock and Dave LaGreca. Le, After we had that conversation, did you have a, a moment to go see what what all this was about? You know what? No. <laughs> <laughs> I did. You're not missing anything. Because, <laughs> you know, I was, I'm not a big Dave LaGreca guy. I mean, uh, I've, I have watched Busted Open Radio. You know, I, I had it on my phone for a while, but. You said for a while, but why did you turn it off? Is it because of him? Is it because of his voice? (laughs) Is it because of his face? You guys know. You guys know. (laughs) Hey, we got a call. We do have a call. It's Dave LaGreca. (laughs) Oh, oh, please. (laughs) Welcome to the Fatal 4-Way. You are live on the air. Who are we talking to? Hello, uh, this is Calk Hogan, uh, (laughs) semi-professional wrestler. You may or may not have heard of my father before. (laughs) Uh, it does not ring a bell, but we certainly appreciate you taking time <laughs> to call into the show. Do you have a comment? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just, I, I really appreciate you guys doing what you're doing, especially on uh, public access uh, public access TV and uh, I love wrestling. Uh, I did a stint uh, semi-professionally down in uh, Illinois. I wrestled down in uh, Champaign and uh bloomington indiana and I, I i wrestled a couple times in lansing you might have heard of it michigan but i think uh, i've been yeah, there uh, yeah okay <laughs> but yeah I, I i just really really appreciate you guys uh you know promoting wrestling you know it seems like uh not very many young people are into it these days and we feel like we need to bring it back you know you know and i so- like what you guys are doing Sean, he brings up a great point, and that's something that I feel like is going to be a uh, a talking point on the Hot Tag podcast. How do we get younger fans back reinvested to make that that next you know generation of of, of wrestling fans? Um, that's a conversation unto itself. But uh, while we have you on the air, you know R- WrestleMania is right around the corner. We have Rock and Roman Reigns um, against Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes in night one. What is your take on these guys occupying multiple spots during WrestleMania? Uh, I I, I think that's the the greatest thing since sliced bread. Uh, I I can't wait to see what Rollins does. Um, I I just think it's going to be a great uh, spectacle. 
Now, remind me, where, where is WrestleMania taking place this year? I, in Philadelphia. I up with Philadelphia, okay, great. City of brotherly love. Right. Beautiful. Yes. Uh, are you guys going to be doing another Colin live show in the near future? We are. Well, it's funny you mention that, and we'll we'll do that this plug right now. When we when <laughs> Fatal Four Way is back on the air, it will be the Friday night before WrestleMania, April fifth. We will be live here on ONTV at six p.m. for our big WrestleMania preview show. So it will be all things WrestleMania on on April fifth. You are welcome to. Oh. To, to call back in. We certainly appreciate you taking time out and joining the show. All right. Well, I will definitely have to call back in and uh, I'll, uh, I'll let my, my, my father Hulk know uh, <laughs> uh, everything uh, that you guys are talking about. I'm sure he'd be interested in tuning in sometime. And uh, well, I'll let you guys go, but I hope you have a good one and uh, keep supporting Public Access TV. We th- Take care, gentlemen. Thank you so much for for being a part of the show. I'm having a good time here. I don't mind. <laughs> this, this is so cool. I, I think we need to go over an hour. I think the show needs to last right. a couple yeah. hours. Uh, we're, we will run a quick timeout here momentarily, uh, but before we do, uh, we want to uh, take a moment here to acknowledge a couple of things. Number one, Big shout out to to Joe Johnson, our our director and, pr- and producer here at ONTV. Without, I mean, he he rolls out this red carpet f- for us. He allows us to, to to do this, and not only that, the dude drug his ass in here s- sicker than hell today. But this was important. He knew it was important to me, for us, for for everybody. So for him to, you know, really. You know, trudge through, as they say. We certainly appreciate that. And um, absolutely, you know, it's 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 oh, yeah. support like that, and then calls like like that that we just had. Lets me know, gentlemen, that we have our finger on the pulse. You know, it, we are finally starting to um, find our niche, find find our lane, at, as it were. And this is literally step one of something much bigger i feel like on the horizon but without you guys there would be oh. no reason for this and as before we go to break we have another call so let's uh see what we got going on here welcome to fatal four way you are live on the air who are we talking to what is going on mr klaus hi there this is <laughs> This is uh, Antoine, Jack Price. Oh! oh. Impact Superstar! Oh. Jack Price. Hey. How are you, brother? I'm, I'm good. I'm uh, I'm actually at, at a TNA show now, but I was watching you guys' show. Wow. And I just wanted to congratulate you guys. Brother, I cannot begin to tell you what this means in all sincerity it, well, well number one on a personal level it's awesome to hear your voice it's been a long time <laughs> um and two knowing you know obviously i've been watching you i've been i've been keeping you know track of you and your career you you are with with tna they do have a big show up in windsor if i'm not mistaken is that correct yes sir so the fact that you're taking time out of your day to call in to our show means everything, man. So, uh, but this is, uh, you know, we got WrestleMania season. I know, you know, as a worker, as a fan, that is very much on the on everybody's radar at this point. But I also know you are doing amazing things. Um, you know, you got this thing coming up this weekend with TNA, who people that are tuning in, what can they expect? Oh, man, they can expect, you know, something some different. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people sleep on TNA and uh, they, they shouldn't, you know, uh, there's a lot of change going on behind the scenes, but it's a lot of good things going on too. So just be prepared. We, we, we about to hit headlines or, or hashtags or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> You know, it's it's amazing because I am paying attention to what TNA is doing. 
because I mean they're really kind of hitting the reset button it, you know Antoine they, they went they started out as TNA they rebranded as Impact Wrestling and then they figured out well let's try going back to what what worked originally and by and large the you know as risky of of a move that is to rebrand your entire pr promotion uh, it seems like it has done a lot of work. I, I saw the numbers for the first pay-per-view outing under the, the rebrand of TNA. They were very, very encouraging. Um, as somebody that is on the roster, that is working with the organization, what is the level of anticipation and excitement as you guys are embarking on this new chapter for the entire pr promotion? Hey, we, we, sky's the limit. Like, that's, everybody's excited for the, for the new things, you know. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was, it was scary at first with the, with the new branding, but it was exciting at the same time because I, I grew up on TNA, you know. Right. So the, the B label as a TNA roster member now, that's, that's awesome. Like, I can always say that now, you know what I mean? But, uh, like, I can't say a lot, you know what I'm saying? But uh, <laughs> things is looking up, I'll say that. Well, we are certainly pulling for you. We are pulling for the entire brand. Because, you know, when you get good talent on in multiple realms and multiple pr promotions, that does nothing but improve the entire business. Right, Sean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why we bring him on the show, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, Antoine, um, is, is there anything else I, I, that you want to put out there? Any kind of uh, plugs of where you may be appearing here in, in the area? What, what's on what's on your agenda, your radar? Um, I got some indie shows coming up next week. So Friday will be in Detroit. Saturday will be in Flint, Michigan, and Sunday will be in Detroit again, but you can catch me on uh, social media, Jack Price 607 that's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or X, whatever. But um, yeah, I'm, but I'm not here to, to, to shout me out. I just wanted to call you guys to shout you out because I listened to the podcast and I just wanted to say congratulations and continue to do what you're doing can't thank you enough brother it means everything that you took the time to to listen to the podcast to to dig what we're doing that's why we do what what we do and to know that people that we love and respect like yourself are paying attention and it resonates that's why we do what we do thank you so much for for, for calling in here tonight hey thank you guys all right ladies and gentlemen awesome. all right. <laughs> We'll we'll talk to you soon, brother. That was that, awesome. That was really cool. That I that was completely uh, unexpected. Jack Price is one of the the gems that is on the rise in this business. And to think, Sean, he wrestled in this building. Yep. There used <laughs> to be a wrestling ring right where we're at, and once a month, man, that kid came out got into this ring under these lights and laid the foundation for where he is now working under the TNA banner. That is so amazing. So what we're going to do, let's run a quick timeout and we will be back with more of Fatal 4-Way live on ONTV right after this. Orion Neighborhood Television is your community media outlet. Our mission is to empower community members and groups to create, communicate, and connect through television and video production. For more than 35 years, ONTV has offered video production classes to residents of all ages and provides them with the equipment and facilities to produce their own programs. Not only are residents encouraged to produce programs, but ONTV staff produces programs that promote local nonprofits and community groups like the Chamber of Commerce, the Orion Township Public Library, and the Lake Orion Lions Club, to name a few. The staff ventures out into the community to cover events like parades, festivals, concerts, and high school sports. 
ONTV has provided the equipment and staffing to televise township and village meetings live and has provided the video equipment that Lake Orion High School students use as they prepare for a career in broadcasting. ONTV's podcast studio and training give producers an opportunity to educate and entertain listeners. To sign up for classes or for more information, call 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org. And welcome back to Fatal 4-Way live here on ONTV. Sean Grugel, Brian Boff, Claudel Edwards, and I'm Jason Klaus. We certainly appreciate you tuning in here. This hour has gone by fast. We have notes that we're not even going to attempt to, to get to. But you still have time to call into the show live right now. Be a part of the conversation. 810-331-2829. Be a part. We heard from Jack Price here a little bit ago. And what a treat that was. And, you know, you talk about Jack Price. You talk about a crop of the up-and-coming superstars that are on the rise here in this business, in this area, Sean Grugel. I know you, you keep tabs, especially on the local shows, the in, the independent shows that are coming to the area, to around the state. What are some that uh, are coming up here pr pretty quick? All right, well, let's go with uh, Capital Pro Wrestling. They're March 10th. Uh, their Facebook is C or Facebook.com, CPW Lansing. Their main event is the Dark Gentleman versus Keith Cream for the Great Lakes title. Okay. Uh, this is what's so cool about independent wrestling. You're going to see the stars of tomorrow in the ring today. Right. So we're going to talk about Metro Pro Wrestling, March 16th, with a bell time of 7.30. The main event is Jason Hotch versus Adam Wick. And that is the same Jason Hotch that's in TNA Wrestling right now. You can check out their website at Facebook.com, Metro Pro Wrestling MI. Pure Pro Wrestling uh, is going to be, uh, well, I don't got the date here. Check out their website, pureprowrestling.net. <laughs> uh, I believe it's this Saturday. I believe it is. Uh, the main event is Silas Young versus uh, Rhino versus Gideon Malice. So you are talking, if you want to go see the superstars, you're talking about Ring of Honor and AEW superstar Silas Young, WWE, ECW, superstar Rhino, and Jack Price right. is going to be there as well. Uh, check out their website at pureprowrestling.net. XICW uh, at the Premier Event Center in Clinton Township. Uh, their website is xicw.info. The main event is WWE's Rhino versus Shogun Jackson Stone. That is the same Shogun from TNA. So you got TNA versus WWE. And with GCW star Tommy Vendetta. If you're into the hardcore deathmatch stuff, that's your guy. He's the future of deathmatch wrestling. Uh, for Us Wrestling, March 23rd at Grizzlies Bar in Wyandotte, Mi Michigan. Bell time's at 7 o'clock. They got a big write-up here. Uh, the Great Tiger defends against a mystery opponent. And Grim Reality uh, challenges for the best tag forever championships, taking on the onset. Uh, on that show, you're going to have the Michigan legend, the DBA, and from TNA, the Terminator, Sam Beal, is going to be there. And then lastly on my list, I have Mr. Chainsaw Pro Wrestling from the Coliseum in Kalkaska, Michigan, March 30th. Uh, their main event, I really want to check this one out. It's uh, their champion, Aaron Orion, who wrestled in this yes. building. Yes, sir. For, and he's the champion here. He's taking on a young lady by the name of Ray Larson, who is just a monster in the ring. Um, and then on that show, it looks like notable names are going to be Silas Young and TNA superstar uh, Jason Hotch. You can check out their website at MCPW online on Facebook. Very cool. If you have the opportunity to uh, check out these these independent shows, I mean, we we cannot encourage it enough because that is where you're going to see the stars of tomorrow right here now and today. Mr. Balf, you are a prominent proprietor of Mount Rushmore lists. That's and true. as we uh, kind of wind this debut episode down of this particular show, one more time, you you still have some time to call in 810-331-2829. We're talking about real quick, and we'll go around the horn here, the Mount Rushmore of finishing maneuvers. Um you and I had a conversation about this the, the other night while at our shoot jobs. Um, <laughs> it, it took me a second to come up with my Mount, my Mount Rushmore. Um, I'll go through them real quick, and then we'll go around the horn. Obviously, the Stone Cold Stunner. 
uh, the Tombstone Pile Driver, the Sharpshooter, and the Macho Man Elbow. Beat that. Ooh, nice, <laughs> nice. All right, all right. I didn't say leg drop, and everybody was going to lose yeah, money on yeah, that. You know, know what else? Oh, he's going to say the leg drop. I was nope. on the leg drop. That's okay. That's all right. All yeah. right, so you go. You go? Me? I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. go. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Because right. you, like, you like you were ready. I'm always ready he's for Mount Rushmore. Right. Right. This is how we <laughs> pass time yeah, at our right. workplace. <laughs> all right, so right off the bat, I'll just jump over top the Stone Cold Stunner, and we'll just go RKO, Diamond Cutter. I kind of broke mine up. Like, for me, that's the most exciting because it can pop up anywhere. Uh, for creativity, I chose the figure eight. Jason kind of downplayed it, but I just like the fact that it went from the four <laughs> to the eight, and you can visually see how an eight works out into it. Why don't you downplay it? <laughs> it's a push-up. <laughs> it's an inverted push-up. In I don't even know if you can do four. a push-up right now. So <laughs> I can. <clears throat> you'd be surprised what I can do, Mr. Ball. Uh, <laughs> for just the brutality of it and, like, the impact, I went with the Death Valley Driver slash the Burning Hammer. Um, and for my last one for success rate, I went Razor's Edge. I like the way it looks. And as far as I know, no one kicked out of Razor Ramon's Razor's Edge. I can't think of anybody that did. Uh, yeah, you know, one, one of the few that didn't I, ever get kicked out of. What about you, Sean? Mine's going to be completely different than everyone else's, I'm sure. Because... I didn't do my homework. When I said when I saw Mount Rushmore, I'm thinking wrestlers in my head, and I'm like, in my head, I'm, oh, crap, I got to come up with these finishers. So my favorite finishers right off the bat, the Iron Claw. Nothing to do with the movie, but the Iron Claw was, I mean, it just come out of nowhere. I love that one. Uh, Gentleman Chris Adams, his super kick. If you've never seen Gentleman Chris Adams throw a super kick, I suggest you go on YouTube now. Uh, I would say superstar Billy Graham's bear hug. Not only did it look devastating, but he looked cool as heck when he was posing when he was squeezing the yeah, life out of the guys. And then probably my last one would be, and that, Jason, I know you're going to slap me from across the table, but I love Ricochet's 450. <laughs> that thing is magical. <laughs> wow. Yes. Not the 630. No, it's 10 minutes to 7. We're good. <laughs> 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 All right. Nice. <laughs> Okay, I, you know, I went for the... the, the ricochet. Yeah, yeah, ricochet. <laughs> yeah, nobody better not say nothing about my list now. Well, at least I didn't say you haven't born. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what? I don't need to put up with that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'm going to go for my first one, the vertebraker. Mm. The vertebraker. You can see Hurricane Helms do that one. I think he got banned, so he, doesn't, he couldn't do it in his later years of wrestling. But... uh. Vertebreaker is number one. I, I did go with Tombstone, Tombstone Pile Driver. Then I went with The Undertaker again with The Last Ride, which I believe is even better than the Tombstone Pile Driver because, man, that's devastating. Especially is that, when it, is that the most, uh, is that the, the greatest version of the powerbomb in, in, in your opinion? We had this conversation last night. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. I anyway. said I feel like the jackknife powerbomb was worse because he dropped you, and I feel like I'm like, man, if somebody just dropped me from that height, it would creep me out. <laughs> it depends on who, who is he doing to move on, really, because, like, okay, if, if you do the last ride to a small guy and you got him, like, lifted up in the air like that and you just slam him down with force, that you hurts. guys have never seen Mike Awesome and his Awesome Bomb. I love the Awesome Bomb. I mean, bomb, yeah. that, that was... thing was crazy. So I mean, he used to throw people out of the ring with it. Yeah, you know, awesome. uh, <laughs> <laughs> something to look up tonight. Mike Awesome is one of those guys. Were, were you done with your list before I go on the no, sidebar? No, I was like three. Okay, what, he's got one more. What, what's your four? <laughs> okay, well, my fourth one is the Vader Moonsault. Oh, okay. nice man. Yeah. Right outside the box. Yeah, right outside one. the box. That's probably He one. can't even fit in the box. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you, you mentioned Vader. Hall of Fame bound. Should he be in the, in, in the WWE Hall of Fame? I think so. I know he wasn't big in WWE. But you look at the other guys. You look at yeah, Sting. But they, yeah. Sting was a headliner exactly. of, of his class. He wrestled three matches. Right. right? So, if I were to go with Sean's... Uh, um, his his way of doing it, his criteria, his criteria. Then I would agree. Maybe Vader shouldn't be in there, but 
WWE does it the WWE way. Right. So Vader needs to be in there. Vader needs to be, and another power bomb guy, Sid. I was waiting Sid for somebody to say Sid. Needs Sid's to name. be in there. Yeah. Wasn't it Sid Vicious that really put the power bomb on the map on the, on a global scale? I mean, I don't remember anybody else doing this move with such force and, and destruction until we saw Sid Vicious or, you know, when, even in WCW yeah. before he came to, the, to the, the WWF. But he was really the first one in the WWF that used the power bomb. So where does his power bomb rank? Is that more, more, devast, more devastating than the last ride? Or does it all depend on who's taking the move? Sid's would be in the top five for me because Sid didn't care. He gets you up and he just throw you down. It was it wasn't a matter of safety with Sid. It was how am I going to beat you as quickly as possible? Oh, yeah. So Sid's power bomb was sick. The jackknife was cool. You know, I mean, power bombs in general are cool, but I don't think it gets any better than the awesome bomb. Just my my take. Mike Awesome is one of these guys that, and I'll I'll be I'll be hundred percent honest. When he was a wrestler, when he was ECW champion and all that, I could not care less about this guy. Mm. I just, he just, <laughs> I don't need this. <laughs> I, I, and I, I know, like, he made his mark in ECW, but there was something, there was just something about this guy I could not put my finger on. I could not, I could not rally behind for, right. for some reason. I don't know why, but he is one of these guys that all these years later, he there's there's a renewed respect on his name. Were you did you follow his? his I did. Career? Yeah, I did. I, I followed all those awesome bombs out of the ring through a table. I mean, I actually forgot about his power bomb, his version of the power bomb until you brought it up. You know, so it's a toss up. You know, because I don't know that last ride is something else. Like imagine Undertaker throwing people out of the ring with a with a last ride. Right. I mean. People put it in the comments. What is your favorite power bomb? Yeah. What is the most devastating power bomb? Put it in the comments, man. I want to. I want to see whether it's in the live comments answers. now or when we upload yeah. it to you still YouTube got later. Seven minutes. You still got seven minutes to call. Or in. call in. Yeah. Call in. Eight one zero three three one two eight two nine. And much, much to like your, what you were saying. If you're not able to call in right now live. The uh, the feed on Facebook will still be up. You will still be able to leave your comments, and we will correspond w with you uh, in in that realm after we go off the air. But uh, you know, you talk about Sid, you talk about uh, Nash, you talk about Mike Awesome. What about Dave Batista? And I and I and I bring him up for two reasons. <laughs> Number one, mm. he had the Batista bomb. Yeah. Where, where does that rank? Uh, not a lot of people, there's only a couple of them that kicked out. Cena and The Undertaker are, are the ones that, that, that really come to mind. But is this year that Dave, that Dave Batista, is he going to be this year's headliner for the Hall of Fame class? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, I, I would hope not. I'm not a Batista fan. Never have been a Batista fan. Uh, but then again, I don't know who else could be the headliner for the Hall of Fame right. at this point. Brian? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Were you about to raise your hand? <laughs> I mean, I got a list here. Of mine. <laughs> if you were to select the headliner for this year's Hall of Fame class, and it's not Dave Batista, or it's not Paul Heyman, Paul Heyman, you can make a strong argument that this guy is your headliner because it's in Philadelphia and his and and everything. He would be the first manager or advocate to headline a Hall of Fame class. If it's not Heyman and it's not Dave Batista, and you could pick your headliner for this oh, year's class, that's who, a good one. Who is it? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a, but for me, I know they don't do the post mortem. For the headliner, but especially with Mike Rotunda and Barry Windham in there, I say you go Bray Wyatt. How can you not? I, this go is with Bray, Bray Wyatt, Wyatt for me. I I would totally agree. Yeah. I mean, I think it's perfect with his father and his uncle being right there. You know, I I think about that. You know the, 
you know, putting somebody in who has passed away as the headliner, they had that opportunity with the Macho Man Randy Savage. Blew it. And they totally blew it. Yeah, they blew it. Totally blew it. Not one individual that was in that class was a bigger star on his worst day than the Macho Man Randy Savage. But because he had already passed away by the time he got the call, mm-hmm. he did. He was not the headliner. They put Kevin Nash, and no, no disrespect to to Kevin Nash. I am not saying that he was not, you know, worthy of being in the Hall of Fame. He's he not was, a headliner. He could have been a headliner of any other headliner. class, <laughs> just not the one with the. You yeah. don't think so? If Scott Hall is not a headliner, Kevin Nash is not a headliner. Okay, so here's my argument with that. We can all agree, everybody watching, everybody at this table can agree, Scott Hall, one of the greatest characters and performers of all time. No doubt about it. Also one of the best finishers. (laughs) (laughs) But you look at his character, you look at his position on the card, at no point was this guy world champion. True. How many pay-per-views did did he headline? Uh, There were a couple, there were a couple, but when you compare... Kevin Nash, or you compare Scott Hall, you there, there is only less than a handful of people that you could put on the same level or above Macho Man Randy Savage. Now, we say all this to say we're talking about Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt's passing was nothing short of tragic right. and untimely because of the, you want to talk about reinventing yourself. We talked about yeah. this with Sting. Bray Wyatt was the epitome of that. Bray Wyatt was a guy on the cusp of greatness that had the potential of becoming bigger than the business. Had he had better health, had he had more opportunity, and a promoter that really um, that gave him the platform yeah. that he needed and deserved, we would be talking about Bray Wyatt in the same breath as The Rock, as Roman Reigns, as Hulk Hogan, you would have, because this guy was built for the, for the business. And I will say this, I don't care who you put in, in this year's Hall of Fame. Take nothing away from anybody that's going in, Paul Heyman especially, but nobody made a bigger impact on his, on his particular fan base and had the potential to really change the, the entire infrastructure of how this business is presented if you were allowed to tap into his mind than Bray Wyatt. And I feel like this is the year that he needs to not only go into the Hall of Fame, but he does indeed need to be the headliner. Q, you and way. I are going to be back here uh, in two weeks for the next installment of the Klaus and Q show. That happens on March the 22nd at 6 p.m. right here where you're watching this. But then the other two gentlemen will be back here for the next episode of Fatal 4-Way Friday, April the 5th, 6 p.m. And yes, that is the kickoff to WrestleMania weekend. We are talking all things WrestleMania on April the 5th. Make your plans, circle the calendar, write down the number, call in, be a part of the conversation. For Sean Grugel, for Brian Balf, for Quadell Edwards, I'm Jason Klaus. We certainly appreciate you tuning in, and we will see you next time right here on Fatal 4-Way, live on Orion Neighborhood Television. Bye, guys.